Hello and welcome back to EV Swap. You know the deal. I'm Jimmy. I'm a car enthusiast and I take cars and convert them into electric. You can see we got a new project in the shop. This is a 2002 Toyota Tacoma. It's a sweet truck. It's a long bed, extended cab, two wheel drive, pre runner, and I think it's going to be an excellent conversion. It's only got 123,000 miles on it. So for a Toyota, that's barely even used and it's just in really good shape overall. So I'm stoked to get started on this project. Let me show you a little bit more about the truck and what our plan is. Under the hood, it's got the uh, 3.4 liter V6 engine. So this is a top spec truck with the V6 and it's an automatic. So what we're gonna have to do is probably replace that automatic with a manual transmission like we did in the Frontier. So what we're gonna do is put the leaf motor under the hood, just like in the Frontier. We'll try to get the stack with the motor, the inverter, the charger, all three stacked on top of each other. And uh, this truck is also gonna have air conditioner and heater running off the high voltage battery. We will do some blocking off of the grill for aerodynamics. We'll do some cosmetic upgrades to it and uh, yeah, it should be very similar to the Frontier project, except we're gonna use a 62 kilowatt hour leaf, which means it's gonna have over 200 horsepower, about 215 horsepower, that's 160 kilowatts, and a 62 kilowatt hour battery, which should provide 150 miles range easy, hopefully more than that. One of the first things I'm gonna do is get this motor cleaned up because we wanna sell this engine. So if you're out there and you need a Tacoma engine, We've got a nice low mileage engine here that runs flawlessly. So we'll get this cleaned up and then we'll pull the engine and the transmission out and we'll start stripping the rest of the gear out of the truck, like the gas tank, the emission system, all that stuff that we're not gonna need. So coming around to the inside of the truck, you can see it's super clean in here. The seats look like they've barely been used. The dashboard is super nice and clean. Really nice gauge cluster. And it even has the little tiny fold down back seats back here. So this is the classic Toyota long bed, extended cab truck in classic Toyota white. So this is like just an awesome little mini truck, you know, all the options that you would want. Um, I think it's gonna be a great little EV conversion, lightweight, good performance, good range, and just awesome drivability and it's in really good condition. It's a little dirty and the headlights are faded and things like that, but I think we'll be able to clean this up and make it look really nice. It's also got kind of a high ride height, which is good because he'll be able to use the bed as a pickup truck and load it down with whatever he needs to load it down with. All right, let's get the truck up in the air and we'll take a look underneath it. And then what I wanna do is weigh the truck now as it sits so we have a before and after weight from the conversion. All right, we got the truck up in the air. Let's go underneath it. So definitely minimal rust. There's a little bit of surface rust on some things, but overall very clean truck under here. I think this generation of Toyota trucks had a recall on the frames because they had severe rust problems. So this truck must have had the frame replaced or it never had that problem because it looks really rust free and clean. You can see the uh, there's just some surface rust, but otherwise pretty clean. Of course, it's got the solid rear axle and the independent front suspension. And you can see the drive shaft is much longer than on the Frontier. And it's actually a two piece drive shaft with the uh, double card end joint here just because this truck's much longer than the Frontier. This is the full bed extended cab truck. So this is about as long as they come. And this is the automatic transmission. It looks to be in pretty good shape. Minor leaks, nothing major. Same with the engine. Some minor leaks, but nothing major. We got the skid plates on here, which is great. And of course it's two wheel drive, so no front drive shafts. But I think this is gonna make an excellent conversion. You can see the fuel tank here and the exhaust. Now on the Frontier, this is the area where I put the battery. Um, there's some minor differences that are gonna make a big difference, I think, on this conversion. 
First of all, there's much more cross members for the double cardan drive shaft and another cross member back here. So I'm gonna get the tape measure out and I'm gonna see roughly if the battery box design from the Frontier would fit in here or if I'm gonna have to do a new battery design. I'm gonna have to do a new one anyway because we're using the 62 kilowatt hour version instead of the 40, but it'll give us a rough idea of how much space we have to work with. This area here is all pretty open and same with the exhaust on this side. So possibly we could have a longer, flatter battery pack to fit underneath here. The other option, if we can't fit the battery under here, is we could put it in the bed of the truck in like one of those pickup truck toolboxes that you've probably seen. Or the last option would be put it behind the seats in the rear back seat area. So I've said before that I don't like to put the batteries in the passenger compartment just for safety issues. It's a pretty rare occurrence, but if the battery does start venting gas or catch fire or do something really bad, um, you wouldn't want that in the cab with you. So if I do put it inside the back seat area, it would be a very well sealed box, very strong, like all my boxes, I would build it, you know, fully waterproof and sealed, but I would have a blowout panel is what they're called. So it would be an area of the box that is designed when the pressure increases inside to blow a panel out. And then we would have a duct to get that gas outside the cab so that it wouldn't fill the cab up with the gas it would be directed outside but that's kind of the third option first option underneath the truck second option in the pickup bed and the third option would be behind the seats so let me get the tape measure out and i'll do some quick measuring and see what it looks like So just based on some really rough measurements, it looks like width wise, we're good. The battery, there's more space between the drive shaft and the frame rails than in the frontier width wise. The issue comes down to uh, the height and the length. So between this cross member here and the rear cross member is just about 28 inches or so that the frontier was. But the issue is you can see the cab comes to this point and then the bed's up there and there's considerably more distance between the frame and the bottom of the bed. That's good in the back, but underneath the cab, there's less room um, just because of the extended cab. And this little kick up on the frame is further rear than it was in the Frontier, which uh, is kind of unexpected. But I mean, I've never been under one of these trucks before. so. Possibly what we could do is relocate this cross member uh, further back or create, just uh, cut this one out and build a new cross member in the rear. And that would give us more length to work with. Um, but I wouldn't wanna cut into the body here to go up. I think that would be very time intensive and you know compromise the stability of the cab. And so I would try to avoid doing that, but possibly what we could do is have a thicker section of the battery box here where there's more room under the bed and then a thinner section here because right now, if I had the same battery box as in the Frontier, it would hang down below the rear axle. It would hang way down here, which uh, <laughs> that wouldn't be good. You wouldn't wanna compromise the ground clearance. So this one's gonna take some effort and some thinking. Luckily, I'm going to utilize um, one of my friends who's excellent at CAD and 3D design to help me with this battery box. The previous ones I've all done on my own, but I just have kind of rudimentary CAD skills. So I'm gonna enlist my buddy Tyler, who's just a genius when it comes to CAD. It does look like we have a lot of space though between this cross member and this cross member. Uh, it's just very shallow. This is only about six inches. Whereas on the Frontier, the battery box was about 12 inches tall. So we would just have to space the modules out much more in this one. It would be a much longer pack, but I think it's doable. Um, I mean, like I said, ideally we'll have the battery under here. That's, that's what we're gonna pursue first. But I mean, this is, this is looking pretty open in this area. And if we get rid of the exhaust, it's pretty open in that area too. 
So we might just have a very long skinny pack or two, one on each side. And a lot of that is gonna depend on the 62 kilowatt hour battery, the, fun the, uh, the form factor and the size of the modules, things like that, because I've never had a 62 kilowatt hour leaf in my shop. So I'm really excited to bust one of those batteries open and, and see how it works because more battery, more better. So that's about it for looking underneath the truck. Let's go ahead and lower the truck down and we'll put it on some scales and see how much it weighs. Okay, so it looks like our weight is 3,417 pounds. It looks like uh, 59% on the front and 41% uh, on the rear. And the side to side balance looks pretty good. So 3,400 pounds, that's heavier than the Frontier um, after the EV conversion. So this is definitely a bigger truck, but still right in that ballpark. And I'm hoping with the V6 engine and the automatic transmission that we might actually be about the same weight after the conversion. Um, I know that 62 kilowatt hour battery is heavy. So definitely gonna use an aluminum battery box to try to lower the weight as much as possible because if we can get this thing in around exactly the same weight as it is now, or a few hundred pounds heavier, then we're gonna be looking good for range and performance. It should be very snappy acceleration and have good highway range. Sweet, okay, well that kind of does it for the introduction to the Toyota Tacoma. I'm super excited for this build. So thanks again for watching. I'll be doing this EV conversion on the Toyota. I also have a second vehicle that's gonna come into the shop for another EV conversion. I won't reveal what that is yet. So make sure you subscribe, hit the bell notification, like the video, leave a comment if you have a question or comment. And uh, again, check out my, my store at evswapconversions.com. I'm doing a sale on the coffee. I only have a few bags left and it's uh, starting to get old. So I wanna sell this off. It's been in deep freeze this whole time, ready to go. I've got ground and whole bean options. Again, I'm starting a wait list for EV conversions because I've got two builds in the shop now, a few more in the line. So you can go to my website and you can put in a deposit and get your spot in line for an EV conversion. Send me an email if you have any questions or you can call me. My phone number is on evswapconversions.com. Thanks again for watching.